Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Virginia Task Force One's Urban Search and Rescue Training Center. Uh, shortly, you're going to see two of our uh, highly trained technical search specialists actually using the finder device to assist them in finding a person that's buried inside our rubble pile. FEMA had identified a problem with increasing the speed of searches in mass disasters like Haiti or Sandy, where they would like to be able to more quickly go through and detect victims buried in rubble. Well, this project finder began, as a lot of projects do, as science. Uh, we invested in some technology that would be helpful for measuring the surface waves on the Earth, also for detecting spacecraft and as they move out in the solar system. And some engineers noticed that that's the same technology that we could also use to detect human heartbeats. If we could detect microwave heartbeats, that's a sure sign of a victim as a heartbeat. It uses uh, microwave radar to scan the pile. We'll actually go through the different cement, wood frame houses, pretty much anything. It'll go ahead and scan it, pulls back it like a regular radar, it'll go ahead and bring back the signal, and we're measuring the micro movements or small movements of the chest wall from the heartbeat and from the respirations, even from, the, the, uh, from your head when you have the, uh, the arteries in your head. The biggest advantage of this is, number one, is, is that it detects unconscious and unresponsive victims. Uh, the other advantage of this is that potentially you could have a number of people who are out collecting the data and all bringing it back to a search team. So you could potentially have multiple radars gathering their information together so you can search the site faster. You can have unskilled people using the finder device and finding live victims that don't have tremendous amounts of skill using canines. If you don't have canines if you, or, the, or the listening devices or the cameras, when the time comes, pull it out, turn it on, very easy to use, and they can detect whether someone's there or not. This team we're working with here is the best of the best. For, uh, Fairfax County Task Force One is probably the best in the world. And we're working with them, you know, because the, the, they get a lot of practice, they go international. The first responders have given us a lot of useful feedback. They've actually been good because they've been very critical uh, in terms of identifying things that just make it less usable than they would like. And we've responded to that and changed the prototype in response to that. Where do I see on here to know that actually there is a communication established and we're good? Well, any piece of equipment that helps us find victims will be glad to take a look at and so this is just one uh, piece of equipment that's you know new to us and so we're just you know taking a look at it evaluating it. In general I think they're encouraged by it it's a game-changing technology it detects things a totally different way it's uh, another tool in the toolbox the search and rescue personnel they're very focused on finding the victims and this is something that helps them do that they want to rescue people they want to save lives.